Alrighty then, hey guys, what's up? It's Sizzent here, and for this vlog, we're going to have a go at dyeing some leather. So work on all of the belts is going along very swimmingly. Those are nearly done. That video should be coming out as soon as the rest of my hardware arrives. But in the meantime, I thought that you guys might like to see some of the sort of testing stuff that I get up to, because after the belts is going to come the pants, and I've got the linen for those right here. This is just one of the scraps that I cut off. So you can see that is a lovely sort of deep chocolatey brown. I believe this shade was cocoa. And basically what I'm going to try and do here is find a dye that will dye my goat hide to a color that will match this. So I've got a couple scrap pieces of goat hide here. And what we're going to do is just experiment a little bit with some of the dyes that I've got. I bought a few more and we're just going to see how close we can get the coloring on these. Now with these pants or hose or trousers or whatever you want to call them. So I've actually had to make quite a few decisions. Now the first decision of delineation is do I go for the promotional art or do I go for the in-game armor? Because the promotional art has white van braces and then the color of the leather outers and the linen inners of the trousers is different. The linen is kind of like a, more, a lighter, more olivey brown and the outer is basically the same um, very deep, almost black brown of the jerkin. And from the braces, you'll know that I decided to go with the game armor. I didn't make white braces. Now, the second choice, of course, is which in-game color? Because there are many. Now, I had to decide, am I going to go with a default armor color palette or am I going to go with one of the dyed armors? And I've gone with the default armor color palette. I've gone as close as possible as I can. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna tilt the camera down now and we're gonna have a look at me play a little bit with some dye and we're gonna see how it all comes out in the wash. The first thing I'm gonna do is just separate some of these scraps a little bit. I don't want this little dangly bit here. Uh, that's pretty scratched up, but that's fine. So yes, I know that I harp on about this a lot, but this is just yet another reason to hang on to your old scrap pieces and your old offcuts. You never really know when they'll come in handy for something like this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just to get a little bit of moisture into these to help the dye absorb a little bit better. And these are all goat hides. Now there's a train of thought that goes thusly. Oh, am I going to dye this big one? Maybe not. Maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's a scrap saved for later. Maybe I only need four scraps. I don't know how many colour combinations I want to check. There is a train of thought that I have seen as I've been researching this sort of thing. Grant, what are you doing? You're on camera. Be better. Now, there is a train of thought that I have seen around the internet in some of the research that I've done as part of this. And I'm by no means an expert, so take this as take this how you will. That when you are doing tests like this, it is imperative that you run the test on the actual piece of hide that you're going to be using. So if you, um, if, if you're looking for a dye and you go out to a leather supply store, you should take a piece of the actual hide that you're using. And yes, if you're making small goods or something like that, I absolutely agree. That is a brilliant idea. But for what I'm doing here, so these trousers are probably going to take at least two goat hides, possibly four. I haven't sized it up properly yet, but the jerkin took four full hides to cut out all of the panels that I needed. And those hides were all slightly different. So I did a color test on one of them and I could just see by looking at them that really, I'm guessing these, I'm guessing all these pieces come from different hides and you can see they're all very similar, all a very similar color, tone, weight, all that sort of thing. Everything that affects the way that a color takes and is absorbed is very similar. So is it best practice to cut off a little scrap of every individual piece that you're going to be using and run the color test on that? Yes, absolutely. And if you're at home, you should be doing that. And I am going to do this color test. Once I find something that I'm happy with, I'm going to double check that it works on the actual pieces before I dye the whole thing. Yes, you should do that. But when you're going out to the shop, 
you can't take, a, you know, four different pieces with you and test on everything. Like, there's a point at which it just becomes needlessly sort of uh, sticking to that rule. So, oh, have I opened this yet? I have not. Oh god, I always get this everywhere. Now, the dye that I've bought for this is the Thebing's Walnut Pro Dye. This is an alcohol-based dye. And this is the first one that I'm really going to test. I think I'm going to put it on this piece. As I've said before, I just put it in a little Chinese takeout container because I've just carelessly bumped the top of too many bottles and knocked it over. I'm using a clean door, but I have a few dirty ones in here that I use just for when I need to muck something up. But um, because we're specifically doing a color test here, I'm using a clean cotton dauber. And I just like to sort of squeeze it a little bit there just to get any excess out of it. And then I'm going to see... Yeah. Yeah, this one, why not? Just little circular motions. So yes, just to give an update on what the rest of the pieces are at. The belts are all coloured, they're all tooled, um, they're all finished. I'm literally just waiting for a few pieces of hardware to arrive in the mail. I wasn't able to source any 63mm uh, buckles that I was happy with in Australia, so it's been shipped in from Canada. The pants are patterned. I've cut one leg out of the real linen. They are still a long way off being done. And I think that for the knife sheath, which is one of the other remaining pieces, I feel like I want to do like a one day build video on that. I feel like a knife sheath could be a, a fun little challenge to set myself. We could get an entertaining video out of watching me try and do that in a day. But, you know, let me know what you guys think. So I was worried that this would be too light and I'd have to go in with some neat sort of oil or something. This is still damp, so this colour will settle over time. You can see it's all splotchy and mottled. That's just where the moisture is settled in the leather. But if I grab this and bring it over, that's not the worst thing I've ever seen, actually. Alrighty then. I'll rotate this with some medium brown. I'll give that a go. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very forgetful, so I like to mark these things, actually. Let's just go. Because the finish can change the colour somewhat, I write down the order that I apply stuff. I need to get another dauber. So, let's try medium brown on this one. Yeah, it's very red, isn't it? I think there's too much red in the medium brown dye for my purposes here. Although it served me to great effect uh, served me to great effect in other applications. That's way too red. I'm not sure that I'm very happy with that one. That's alright, that's what this is for. So I'll seal that up. I think that I want to have a few different goes of the walnut because I've got a couple different antiques that do change the patina at the end. So we've got the whiskey antique. Whoops. However, I also have the, oh, that's quarter of an, uh, is that gonna to be too light? Questions, questions. I do have a paste Phoebings antique finish that I bought, as you can see, for 11 Australian dollars. See, it looks very dark, but I don't know how light that's gonna come up in the end. So what I'm going to do is just dye a few of these walnut and then we'll see how the different finishes take on them. Yeah, that's still so red. Yeah, I think that we could discount the medium brown because I mean like look at that. That's that's nowhere near. Like that's a lovely color. Definitely. It's a lovely color, but it's not it's not what we want. You know? I'll just get walnut on these ones so that it can hurry up and dry and then we can get different finishes on it. We'll do one with Neats for Oil, see how that changes it. I'll do one with the Oakwood Leather Conditioner, which generally keeps the colour tone a little bit cooler. I'm not sure how cool that brown is. I'm not very, I'm not great at colour theory. My strengths lie elsewhere. And when I find where, I'll inform you straight away, of course. So, the first step on all three of these was Walnut. One Walnut. Let's rub that down a bit. So you can see 
actually, this is something interesting. You can see as I sort of polish it just with a rag, this is dry. There's no color coming off onto, oh, there's a tiny bit of color coming off onto my rag, but you can see that's becoming much more glossy and much shinier. And I, I've noticed that with the goat hide. This is my first time sort of working with so much. It was interesting to me that it got so glossy as you ran a cloth over it. It is an, it is an interesting finish that you can get out of this thing. So these aren't perfectly dry yet. You can see that it's still splotchy and, and the color on these will advance over time. As I put my hands on them, I can still, I can feel that they're still cool from all the moisture that's in them. Just as a reminder, this is our target color. So like the lighter sections are a little bit light, but I think that somewhere in here, here is the color that we're after. So now we are going to put just plain Neats foot oil on one, and then we're going to put the, I'll put the whiskey antique on one. God, these still need to dry a lot more. I'll see how just the neat's foot oil goes on this one. It's the furthest progressed. That takes it to a really, really dark place. This is quite thin goat hide though. And like I said, there's still a lot of moisture in it. So the color on this will certainly progress. That's, that's shot way past where I'm aiming for. God, I wasn't expecting that. Hopefully, hopefully this one lightens up a little bit as it dries. Let's cut this one in half. All right, all right, all right. Now we've got some more tests to play with. Uh, the second thing that we did to this was Neat's foot oil. And that's sort of just gonna kind of chill for the moment. Obviously you don't need gloves on to apply oil or just, oh, that's a terrible noise. Oh, that is just unpleasant. Obviously you don't need gloves on to apply Neat's foot oil or something like this, but just because I'm working with all of the dyes, I'm not gonna take them off. Uh, no, I'll use a different rag, I'll be good. I have an old, long past its use bed sheet that I tear my rags off from. What do you guys use for your rags? No one has a pleasant smell to it as well. Okay, so we've given these some time to dry and put on a new pair of gloves as well because I ate dinner, but Hmm. A frustrating thing. So again, this is what we're trying to match the color of. I would say that these are closer than these. This is with the Oakwood conditioner, which isn't as dark as the Neat's Foot. The Neat's Foot has shot right past that. That's too dark. The Oakwood is closer. I think if I can consistently get it on, not quite so thick, maybe daub it on a little bit thinner, that could almost work. But then, just with no finish at all, I would say it's closer to the target than, than with a finish put on it. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm just gonna see how the top coat looks on it. Now, I would not want to put top coat on as a finish if I can avoid it for one reason. And that reason is this will make it stiffer. This will make it more rigid and more brittle. And, and these are to go on the outside of a pair of trousers, which is kind of want your pants to be able to bend. That is generally, Generally, generally a desirable trait to have in pants. Let's soak for a second and then just wipe that off. I'll well and truly have to wait for this to dry to see what we're gonna do. What I do want to do is grab another little scrap, just a small scrap. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna try a lighter color than the walnut. So we tried the medium brown and that was no good. So I'll give these other two would try, I think. I don't have high hopes for mahogany, but you know, we're here to experiment, so experiment we shall. I'm gonna have to get a clean dauber again because we're moving to a lighter color. Oh, I'm running low on these things. I wasn't expecting to go through three of them. So you can sort of even see on there, it's, it's very yellow. Um, at least it has been on the cowhide I've put it on. We'll see how it comes up. Yeah, that's... That is a yellow brown. That's not the best coverage I've ever seen. God, that was pretty terrible actually, but you know, here we are. Well, that, that ends up being the winner. Um, and then I'm gonna use the same dauber as that for the mahogany because the saddle tan is a much lighter color than the mahogany, so it's not gonna pollute it too much and I don't really expect the mahogany to do much of anything. Although that is going into an experiment with preconceived notions and we shouldn't do that, but well, look, here we are, we're all human, aren't we? Too dark, too dark and too red. 
But now we know that for sure. You know, I was worried that the walnut was gonna finish up being too light and here we are. Certainly didn't. So as you can see, the top coat doesn't change the color that much. What if I gave it a rub with some antique and then put top coat on? Good question, Grant. Let's find out together. And basically get the clean bit of the rag and wipe it all back off again. Ah. What is it with me and getting extremely red browns? Oh, that's remained reasonably pliable so far. Not as, not, oh God, not nearly as pliable as these ones. Yeah, you can see that just wants to flip flop every which way. And you can see that that wants to sit much more firmly like that staying up for its whole length and this thing is, <laughs> God. Um, so yeah, the top coat does make it more rigid, which is depending on what you want, that can be what you're after. That's just too red. That's already way too red. I don't think that anything that we do to the um, to the mahogany is gonna get us anywhere. Part of me wants to just put neat's foot oil on this and see what it does, because I wasn't expecting neat's foot oil to make this one quite so dark. But, but, yeah, screw it. Let's put the neat's foot oil on it, see where we get. That ain't it. <sighs> Let's take yet another piece. Uh, after, I, after I write on this what we've done. This one we're going to hit with the walnut. Are we? Yes. Yes. Try putting some top coat on that one now. Yeah, it looks like that's peeling off a lot of the antiquing actually. That's kind of exciting to me because really I think we only needed a nudge from it. So I wasn't expecting to use top coat on a garment piece, but oh shit, if that's what works best, then that's what works best, isn't it? So again, we can see this piece is starting to absorb that water right away. So let's get some walnut dye onto it. I'm gonna try to go in here with a bit more of a feather touch than I did with the others, but this is a fucking loaded dauber, so. See how successful I am. Put on in streaks like that rather than my usual circular motion. Yeah, I'm... that's gonna look shit when it dries. You're gonna get such a clear watermark over there, but you know, just trying to get it on in a little bit more of a light and refined manner, if you will. I think we can all agree that's going nowhere. And that's just, that, <laughs> that's not even close to the right brown. So I think we're gonna have to start with the walnut. Clear, I think that the walnut is our starting point. It's getting us in the right area. It's giving us the right jumping off point. It's just too warm when it gets too dark with the neat's foot. Um, this is the whiskey antiquing from Birdsall. Now I don't mind if I use a dirty rag when I peel it back. It still needs to dry a bit. As this is drying, I think this is getting a little bit lighter. Cause these are almost the same color now. And this one doesn't have any of that conditioner on it. So do I want to try the top coat and see how we go? Cause this isn't quite there yet. Here we go again. Just dampen this and leave it to dry while I put some top coat on this one. Cause I want to see what direction I can take this with different finishes. So. I don't know how it's coming up on the camera, but these are all very, very fucking similar. I'm just, I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting here splitting hairs in between different shades of brown because I can't allow myself to just be happy with a color being not exactly right. But you know, I think that this is a good thing. I think that, I think that it's good to try and get something as close as we can because that's what I enjoy about this. And not ev not everyone thinks that cosplay is about that, you know? Not, not everyone wants to get 100% screen accurate with a cosplay, but that's part of the challenge to me. That's, that's a part of it that I enjoy. So obviously if you don't enjoy it, just disregard my bullshit and my neuroses, but God damn it, hurry up and dry. So this one is the Walnut, the whiskey antiquing, and the top coat. I'm gonna have to leave all of these to dry overnight until they reach their resting. Moisture content, which is fine, that's whatever. It's just frustrating that I can't rush through it. Oh, interesting little bit of trivia. So this is the rag I've been using for the top coat. This won't be usable afterwards. I've got an old top coat rag here. It... For whatever reason, and this is the similar effect that it has on the leather, it just binds everything up and makes it very, very rigid. Which is great if you're looking for a structural piece, 
or if you've done some really intense um, tooling and carving and you don't want that tooling and carving to get warped and misshapen, this shit, this shit is great for that because it will not get warped and misshapen. It holds it really nicely. It's just if you have a garment leather and you want it to be more supple or, or, or anything like that, it's not sort of ideal, unfortunately. But you know, nothing is. Nothing is perfect for every use case. And that's why we try different things like this. That's why we get in here and we try different dyes and different combinations and different finishes and all that sort of shit, you know? And that's part of the fun of it is, is the experimentation and seeing what you can do and what can be achieved. None of these are show pieces. These are all explicitly test pieces that I'm doing on scraps. So I don't have to care if you can see the lines from the dauber or the brush strokes or however you want to put it, yeah, see. And the second thing that I'm going to do to this one is the whiskey antiquing, but I'm going to wait for it to dry for a minute and I don't really have anything else to do, so. All right, so I'll put some of this antiquing on this one and then hit it with the leather conditioner and see if that gets us where we need to be. Ooh, that was a little bit much, so I'm gonna have to very quickly blot that around. Now my rag's absorbed more of it than it otherwise would, so less of it has gotten on the piece. And then, oh, I don't have a clean side. And it turned out fine. So, Grant, why are you just adding antiquing and then pulling almost all of it directly off? Well, first, it's generally what antiquing is for. You generally don't use it on a flat piece like this. You'll generally use it on a tool piece to add depth. That's exactly what I want it to do here. I want to use the warmth of this brown just to change the tone of the color without making it too much darker. So now that that has been successfully removed, I never have a clean rag near me, God. There we go. This is to a clean rag. You can't see the splotches on it, it's fine. So I'm just seeing how much color is coming away from it so I know if it's ready for the conditioner and it is because I'm in a hurry. So on this one, it was the walnut and then it was the whiskey and then three was the oak wood. Let's lay out what we've got and see where we are for tonight. That is still very shiny and still needs to come down a bit. I don't know if I'm happy with any of these, honestly. So this one's too light. And that was just walnut and top coat. So that's too light at the edges, but it might be all right in the middle. So if I go really aggressive with the walnut and put the top coat on, maybe. That still needs to dry. I can't say much about that yet. That with the neat's foot oil. No, that's the oak wood. I don't hate it. This, I think, is the neat's foot. Yeah, it is. That's way too dark. That's incredibly dark and doesn't match at all. What was this one? Walnut, quarter van antiquing, and then top coat. Honestly, I don't hate that. It's not, mm, it's not the same color. It's a nice close match. And then this one was the walnut, the whiskey antiquing, and the top coat. Honestly, I don't mind that either. No, I don't like it. That's still very warm. That's heaps warm. Why is that so warm? And then this one we'll wait to dry before we say anything too meaningful about it. But I think that might be a non-starter as well. God damn it. Maybe just the walnut and the oak wood. Like, we'll see how this looks in the morning. But maybe just walnut and oak wood is the way to go with this. Anyway... How's that look? Yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely, that is. It's beautiful. Anyway, thank you all very much for joining me in the test kitchen here. I hope that you found this interesting and or entertaining just to see what goes on with everything sort of behind the scenes that I don't put in the main videos. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you're new here, please stick around. If not, that's fine too. Enjoy your time on YouTube and the broader internet. But you guys, take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.